All right. Well, good morning once again. Thank you for passing into another episode of Wednesday Wake Up. We're going to take a dive into God's Word and talk about a pretty heavy, pretty long passage, but I'm going to hopefully uh, trim it on down and uh, give us a couple things to take with us for the rest of the week. I'm um, talking about the bread from heaven and Jesus being that bread from heaven, uh, the bread of life. Um, so there's some selected passages from John uh, chapter 6, verses 22 through 59. Um, and prior to this was the, the feeding of the 5,000 that we heard about last week. And then Jesus took a little trot on the water because, you know, he could do that. Uh, and then the disciples were essentially trying to still get away, trying to get that rest that they were looking forward to prior to that feeding of the 5,000. Uh, and the people tracked them down once again. And so now listen to the reading from God's word. Then they said to him, what must, we, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you going to perform? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written. Give them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you, that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this bread from heaven, this bread of life discussion that Jesus has uh, with those around him and with the witness of the disciples um, gets him into trouble. He, uh, he loses disciples after this conversation um, because this is the foundation or one of the foundations uh, that we have in the Bible of why we celebrate communion or Eucharist or the, the Lord's Supper, so that when you go up to the front of the church and someone gives you a piece of bread and says, this is the body of Christ broken for you, we can say that because Jesus said, I am the bread of life. If you take me in, I will give you eternal life. Um, and this whole eating of my flesh and drinking of my blood, which is right in the scripture, uh, I didn't read those parts to so not distract us. That that turned off a lot of people, and you can understand why. It's uh, it can be taken literally, and and it's a pretty scary thought if you think about it literally. Um, and people just didn't understand it. They didn't know what he meant, and they said this guy definitely lost it. I I was I was with him up until now, and now we're going to have to to leave him. And so it's a good example of how Jesus is not afraid to to ruffle some feathers, not afraid to even lose some friends and followers uh, by, by expressing the truth of God. He's never afraid of stating God's truth and letting the chips fall where they may. If people run away and get scared because of it. That's okay, because he'd rather do that than, than shy away from God's truth, which is a pretty neat thing to know about Jesus. He's not afraid to express God's truth. And so what we read of Jesus' lessons we know it can be God's truth. Uh, there's a couple things that popped out at me in this passage, um, and, uh, and and I'd like to just share those with you. The first is a really neat connection in 
how it feeds in from our discussion from last week. Um, the fact that in the feeding of the multitude, remember they had just that one basket of five loaves and, and two fish and, and thousands were fed. And what was the next thing that Jesus said? He said, go and collect all the leftovers. And they collected 12 baskets of leftovers. Um, and he said, so that nothing will be wasted. And the lesson that I took away from that last week, and again, he expresses it today, is, is that when you give something to Jesus, nothing is ever wasted. If you give you time, your talents, your treasures, your thoughts, if you give them to Jesus, nothing is ever wasted. And Jesus amps that message up today. He says, basically, if you give yourself to me, you will never be wasted. Your life will never be wasted. I will never turn you away. This is a very powerful message from here. It says, everything that the Father gives me uh, will come to me, and anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. So Jesus says that if you come to me, I'll never be away from you. He says, I will give you eternal life. And, and, and yes, you may die, um, but I will raise you up on the last day. So I will never turn you away. There's a, there's a big theological debate about whether you could lose your salvation. Um, some people believe that if you have salvation, if you've been saved, you could do something in your life. You could be a sort of person and lose that salvation. Well, this is a big argument against that, is that once you, once you have a relationship with Jesus, you can't lose him. He'll never let you go. No matter what happens in your life, and maybe that's the most important thing you may hear today, is that once you decide to have a relationship, once you accept Jesus into your life, he'll never let you go. It doesn't matter what you do, who you are, he'll never let you go. He says, I will never drive them away. It's a pretty awesome passage. The next thing is shows how cool of a of a preacher Jesus was. You see, he in, in this one little passage, he differentiates his message from the message in the Old Testament, the, the message that Moses gave from God, um, but yet always shows that it's God that was at work throughout all of it. He says, and in, in this is actually what we chatted about, we touched on it last week, about the Israelites. And we're walking through the desert, and God, day after day, gave them manna. Uh, this is like this flaky, kind of, I guess, sweet substance that we read about it in the Bible. Uh, I can't wait to go to heaven to try it. It's this 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 bread type product that they could make, uh, um, you know, they grind it up in flour and make cakes out of it. Um, this manna from heaven, it was literally um, bread from heaven that Jesus, uh, that, that God gave to the Israelites day after day. And Jesus said that, yeah, Moses was in charge back then, but it wasn't Moses giving you that bread from heaven. It was God giving you that bread from heaven. And, and yes, the Israelites ate it, but they died. But God has come out with a new, bread from heaven. God has given you me. I am the new bread from heaven. And if you take me in, you'll never die. And so I think one of the things that I learned when I was working for GE, one of the guys said the most popular and the most powerful um, marketing term that you'll see uh, is new and improved. I guarantee you, you've been into the store at one time and you see a box that says new and improved in big bold letters and it catches your eye, right? Well, this is what God did. God, God created the new and improved manna. Back in the day, he created manna for the Israelites and they ate it and they were sustained, but then they died. And God said, I need to do something better. I need to create manna 2.0. So imagine going down the the, the hallway of a, of a or down the, the aisle of a store and you see a box that says manna new and improved now made with 100 percent jesus i know it's really cheesy but i had to say it um but jesus is the new bread from heaven and jesus said if you take me in um, i will give you eternal life yes your your body may die to this world but i'm going to raise you up on the last day i am god's ultimate solution um, to that sustenance, to that bread that, that God gave to the Israelites way back when. They ate it and they were sustained for a while, but then they died. But if you take me in, I'll never, ever let you go. It's probably the most important thing that you're going to hear today is that, that if you take Jesus in, he'll never, ever let you go. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you do. Um, he's yours and yours and you're his. So let's wrap that up at that point in time and, and just contemplate for the rest of the week, if we could, on, on that new and improved plan, that new and improved manner, that new and improved 
bread from heaven that, that God offered up in the form of Jesus. And, and it's up to our free will in order to choose him. And if we do, um, he'll never, ever let you go. Let's pray to that, to that awesome God. God, we thank you for, for your bread from heaven, for, for giving us Jesus and allowing us to, to make that decision to accept him into our lives, to, to take him in. To, to maybe think a little bit more deeply the next time that, that we take communion, that we maybe open up that little wafer pack, or, or maybe when we finally get to, to receive that piece of bread in the front of, of our church and, and listen to the words when the pastor or the, the deliverer says, this is the bread, this is body of Christ broken for you. And when we say amen, to truly believe that, that we're allowing you into our lives and and allowing you to claim us as your very own, to never, ever let us go. Lord, give us the strength to accept you today and to keep on accepting you every day of our lives. And we pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Catch you next time, folks. Thanks for joining.